Ever held a rock and thought, hmm, this one might be alive? No, me neither. But on Mars, that's basically what scientists are experiencing right now. Perseverance rover rolled up on a rock that's so suspicious, it's been called the closest we've come to discovering ancient extraterrestrial life. And it's not just some random pebble. It's a full-on leopard spot mystery. As someone who geeks out about the universe, I can't stop laughing that the most important discovery in space might also double as a fashion statement. <laughs> Let's find out why this silly-looking rock is so serious. Imagine stumbling across a rock that looks like part detective evidence bag and part Dalmatian. You'd probably wonder if it belonged in a science lab or a pet parade. That's exactly the situation Perseverance rover found itself in when it beamed back images from Jezero Crater. The rock has strange dark spots scattered across its lighter surface, almost like someone sprinkled poppy seeds on top. Scientists have nicknamed these markings leopard spots, and while they sound cute, they carry hints of something much bigger, possibly even evidence of past life. Suddenly, the most suspicious object on Mars looks like it rolled out of an art class. What makes this rock more than just a polka-dotted souvenir is the mix of clues inside. Perseverance detected both organic compounds and specific minerals, the sort that on Earth often trace back to microbes doing their work. But here's the tricky part. Rocks can be sneaky. Geology has its own ways of creating patterns and chemistry that resemble biology. It's like looking at a set of footprints in the sand. Your first thought is person, but it could just as easily be an animal. Nature loves misdirection. Mars might just be laughing at us from across space. The best way to picture this is food-based. Because, let's be honest, snacks make science easier. Think about opening a cookie jar and spotting what looks like chocolate chips. You're thrilled until you take a bite and realize they're raisins. That's the challenge here. Organics plus minerals look like a sweet recipe for life, but it might turn out to be the geology version of an oatmeal raisin prank. You can't tell just by glancing. You need to dig deeper to know what you're really tasting. Jezero Crater itself adds to the intrigue. Billions of years ago, this basin was home to a river delta. Flowing water carried sediments that piled up, created layers, and sealed away chemical records that scientists are now trying to read. On Earth, deltas are excellent at preserving biological signals, but they're also perfect at trapping non-biological chemistry. So, if you wanted a stage built to either reveal or hide ancient life, you couldn't design a better set than Jezero. The spotted textures in this rock earn side from scientists because they echo microbial tricks found on Earth. Small, dark rims around mineral grains can appear where microbes once interacted with iron, and the tiny specks look eerily like the microbially induced textures we already know. Of course, the universe has an impressive imagination, and geology can copy those moves without ever involving biology. In other words, this rock might be the universe's worst poker face. It keeps smirking, but it refuses to show its hand. Organic chemistry adds another wrinkle. Finding organics on Mars alone doesn't prove anything about life, since non-biological processes can whip them up too. Yet combined with these unusual mineral structures, the suspicion level shoots up. This is why many scientists say this particular rock is the closest we've come to Mars whispering, I used to have company. Now that the evidence has us collectively squinting at it, the next challenge is obvious. Proving that this isn't just geology, pulling one very well-timed prank. Ever try proving a ghost isn't in your house? You can't see it, you can't touch it, but you still find yourself checking behind the shower curtain. That's basically how scientists treat Mars rocks. Instead of rushing to say, this must be life, they flip the question around. They assume the opposite. Whatever they're looking at isn't biological, unless every test fails to prove otherwise. That cautious stance has a name, the null hypothesis. And the goal is simple. They want to prove the rock's weird spots and chemical mix are geological first. Only if geology strikes out completely does biology even get a seat at the table. Why all the skepticism? Because rocks are tricksters. Geochemical reactions can mimic the same shapes and signals microbes leave behind. For example, patterns in minerals may look like cellular growth under a microscope, but they might just be the way crystals naturally form. It's like spotting footprints on the beach. You're tempted to picture a person walking their dog, but it could just as easily have been a raccoon or a seagull hopping around dragging a shell. With Mars, the difference is more serious. One interpretation says life once thrived. The other says nice rock formation. This careful dance keeps scientists from getting carried away. Jumping to conclusions too soon would risk headlines about alien life, followed by disappointment when the claim collapses. Think of it like smelling cookies in the oven, but being forbidden from opening the door. The scent is sweet. The guess is chocolate chip, but you know it could turn out to be raisins again. So caution isn't about being boring. It's about making sure science doesn't mistake raisins for dessert. On Earth, many studies connect iron-rich 
rich minerals with certain microbial processes. Microbes interact with iron as part of their metabolism, and over time, that leaves chemical traces in the rock. Mars rocks showing similar mineral structures are intriguing for that reason. But the trouble is, geological processes without biology can also create iron deposits. In other words, iron is a suspicious character in this mystery, but the jury can't agree if he's guilty or just hanging out at the scene of the crime. The funny side is how seriously this caution plays out. It's science's version of relationship advice. Don't text your ex until you're absolutely sure. Except here, the ex is Mars, and the are you still alive text might change human history. No one wants to be wrong on that scale, so the default is to slow down, double check, and then check again. What we're left with is ambiguity that's frustrating but fascinating. No test so far has knocked the life explanation off the board, but none has clinched it either. The null hypothesis stands strong, which means Mars refuses to confess, and that leaves us asking the obvious. If the planet won't talk, how do we actually expose the truth? Imagine trying to solve a murder mystery, but the main suspect refuses to come to the interrogation room. That's the situation with Mars. The Perseverance rover has found rocks that look suspicious, but instead of hauling them into a lab where every detail can be tested, scientists are stuck investigating from 200 million kilometers away. The rover has impressive instruments, no question, but they're more like handheld flashlights compared to the stadium lights of Earth-based labs. You basically get remote sniffing and scanning. It's better than nothing, but it's like judging a painting from across the street using binoculars. That's why the plan has always been to bring the samples back. In labs here on Earth, scientists can use exacting equipment that measures things down to individual isotopes. They can cut slices thinner than a human hair, test for subtle fractionations in carbon, and even sequence complex organic molecules to understand their structure. These details are what separate a living process from a lifeless one. Without them, the debate stays stuck at looks suspicious. The idea is straightforward. Collect the suspect rock, lock it in a secure container, and then rocket it back home. Problem solved, right? Well, not so fast. If Mars had a rideshare app, Perseverance would still be waiting for its driver. The Mars sample return mission, which was going to fetch the rock, has been delayed, reshaped, and in some cases, nearly canceled. The rock is ready to ship, sitting quietly in Jezero Crater, but the interplanetary Uber has called in sick. That leaves us with a frustrating limbo. The evidence is stored, scientists are eager, but the ride back to Earth just isn't confirmed yet. This is where the frustration becomes almost funny. You wouldn't trust a pixelated Zoom call to decide if the person on the screen is your soulmate. You'd want to meet them in person, look at details, and confirm what's real. That's all scientists are asking for with this rock. Instead of a blurry feed from rover cameras, they want the full, high-definition analysis Earth Labs can provide. Even then, some expectations need grounding. Ancient DNA, if microbes ever left any, almost certainly wouldn't survive on a planet blasted by radiation for billions of years. That means we're not reviving Martian dinosaurs or building a Jurassic Mars park. At best, we'd be piecing together chemical signatures, the ghostly outlines of an ancient ecosystem now long gone. The exciting part is that those chemical patterns could still prove life once existed. The disappointing part is that no one's adopting a Martian goldfish. Of course, if something is alive on Mars today, it's most likely not sitting on the surface where everything gets cooked by UV rays. It would probably be underground, tucked away, where liquid water might survive in pockets. That's the hiding place we can't see yet. Until then, the sample return holds the key. It promises answers, but it demands patience. Which leaves us staring at a spotted rock across the cosmos, waiting for its secrets to finally make the trip home. This funny-looking rock on Mars carries something huge inside its speckled surface. The possibility of answering humanity's oldest question, are we alone? It's strange that spots on a rock might hold more meaning than entire books on the subject, but that's where we are. The search for life's traces may take decades, but every test brings us closer to certainty. Following this journey isn't just watching science, it's being part of figuring out the punchline. Science moves slowly because it has to outsmart the universe's tricks. Stay curious, keep watching, and laugh with the process because Mars might laugh back.